The crowds swarmed the city, throwing rocks, punches, and insults. The cops pretended to control the crowd, but they were really helping white rioters attack black citizens. How did this happen in a city known for its diversity? This is Two Minute Black History, what you didn't learn in school. Eugene Williams was only trying to cool off from the oppressive July heat. It was 1919, and the Chicago summer was no joke. Though the waters of Lake Michigan were segregated, it was still peaceful, but the tranquility was short-lived. Williams accidentally drifted towards the white side of the lake. An enraged white swimmer stoned him, causing him to fall off his raft and drown. Black witnesses called the police, but the white officers who showed up refused to arrest the white attacker. Already dealing with overcrowding, work shortages, and the general indignity of segregation, black people in the city protested. This was too much. Many black people had left their southern towns and moved to Chicago, but Williams' death highlighted the city's hypocrisy. Yes, the city was diverse in the North, but that didn't mean black people could expect justice. Whites decided to fight black protesters and the city exploded. Riots in the city lasted over a week. White police officers openly protected white attackers and fought alongside them to hurt black protesters. What does that mean for us today? Williams' case showed over a century ago that police cannot be trusted to serve and protect, and that white supremacy would rather uphold segregation than save a teenager's life from drowning. This is the truth of what we are up against. In order to move towards the future, you've got to look to the past. This has been Two Minute Black History, a podcast by Push Black. Show your support by sharing this episode on your social media and join us in amplifying stories we all deserve to know.